For centuries prior to the 1960s, resist dyeing techniques have been used by many different cultures in many different parts of the world. Wax is used in Indonesia to create batik designs. Artisans use fermented mud to pattern cloth in Africa. And in Japan, different materials are used to bind fabric, creating surface designs known as shibori. The earliest known example of shibori cloth dates from the 8th century AD. Shibori is a Japanese textile art form using dye resist techniques of binding, clamping, or gathering cloth so that the dye cannot reach certain parts. There are infinite numbers of ways you can bind, stitch, fold, twist, or compress cloth for shibori, and each way results in different patterns. Different techniques can be used in conjunction with one another to achieve even more elaborate results. Today we'll be learning three different shibori techniques. Arashi, Kanoko, and Irijami. Arashi shibori is also known as pole wrapping shibori. The cloth is wrapped on a diagonal around a pole, tightly bound with thread, evenly spaced, then scrunched together. The result is a pleated cloth with a diagonal design. Arashi is the Japanese word for storm, and the pattern suggests heavy, driving rains. The materials we will need for this technique include twine, scissors, masking tape, a large PVC pole, and one piece of 100% cotton fabric. Begin by folding your fabric in half. Place the PVC pole on a diagonal on top of the fabric. Lift up the fabric corner and secure it with a piece of tape. Begin rolling the fabric around the pole, being careful not to overlap the edges as you roll. Take the end of the twine and tape it to the bottom of the pole where you would like the pattern to begin. Continue to evenly space the twine as you wrap it towards the top of the pole. This will create a consistent pattern in your design. Grab the fabric on either side of the pole and push it down towards the bottom of the pole, scrunching it together. Then continue to wrap the pole until you have reached the top again. When all of the fabric is wrapped around the pole and scrunched to the bottom, secure the twine to the pole and cut it. The shibori is now ready for the dye vat. Kanoko shibori is what is commonly thought of in the West as tie-dye. It involves binding certain sections of a fabric to achieve a desired pattern. The pattern can be altered by loosening or tightening the thread or by folding the fabric before binding. For this technique, we'll be using glass pebbles, elastic bands, and a piece of 100% cotton fabric. Begin with an open piece of fabric. Place a glass pebble in the center of the fabric 
and turn it over. Wrap the pebble with an elastic, going around it at least twice. The tighter you wrap the elastic, the more definitive the line will appear on the fabric after dyeing. For today's demonstration, we'll be creating an organic fabric pattern. Continue adding pebbles until you are satisfied with the design. Itajami shibori is a shaped resist technique. Traditionally, the cloth is sandwiched between two pieces of wood which are held in place with string. Modern textile artists are using shapes cut from plexiglass and securing with clamps or elastics. Before clamping, the fabric can be folded in pleats or in a triangle form to create different patterns. For this technique, we will be using clamps or binder clips, plexiglass circles, and one piece of 100% cotton fabric. Begin by folding the fabric in half three times. Then place a plexiglass circle on both sides of the folded fabric. To secure the circle, place a binder clip on each side of the fabric. Before dyeing the shibori pieces, they must be placed in a warm water bath for at least 30 minutes. This opens the fibers to accept the pigment. Indigo dyeing is a unique and magical process. It is one of the few natural dyes that doesn't need a mordant to prepare the fibers to accept color. Other direct dyes include black walnut and turmeric. Today we are using a prepared indigo vat. The materials used to create the vat include one large metal tub for wetting and rinsing the fabric, a five gallon bucket, an empty one gallon plastic jug, tongs and a slotted spoon, a wooden spoon for mixing, measuring spoons, pre-reduced indigo, an apron, safety glasses, and long rubber gloves. It is important to wear the glasses and gloves to protect your eyes and skin from contact with the dye solution. Fill the five gallon bucket with three gallons of room temperature water. Then add two tablespoons of pre-reduced indigo crystals. Slowly stir the vat to dissolve the crystals. Place a lid on the vat and let it sit in a warm area for at least an hour. Take off the lid and remove the indigo bloom from the top of the vat. One by one, submerge the shibori pieces into the vat and hold under for one minute. 
What makes the indigo dyeing process unique is that it depends on oxygen. Indigo is insoluble in water and is suspended until the oxygen is removed by a reducing agent. The indigo particles then dissolve and bind to the fibers. When the fabric is removed from the vat and exposed to oxygen, you can see it slowly change from green to blue. We have submerged all the shibori pieces into the vat and let them oxidize for 15 minutes. We will now slowly unwrap, unbind, and unclamp each piece to see the designs the shibori resists have created. The final step is to let your pieces hang dry out of direct sunlight. You can then rinse them in cold water with a pH neutral soap and the dye will remain permanently fixed to the fabric.